In this video, I'm going to take a look at the US stock market, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we're going to look at the dollar index. Because it's Sunday, the markets are closed, and let's do an update on this because I haven't done that in a while. If you enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe down below, smash the like button. Let's get into it. Now, the reason why I also like to look at the stock markets is because it does kind of give us a bit of an idea to help find confluence for the direction of crypto. If the stock market is going up, in general, crypto is somewhat correlated to that. And if the stock markets go up, there's a decent chance that crypto also has that bullish bias. Now, what we're seeing here, simply a weekly chart, very easy. And the way I like to look at it is the 200 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average in blue, 200 in red. Now, basically above the 200 is bullish territory. Above the 50 is basically full-blown bull mode because you can see here, as long as the price is here above this 50, you can see like what kind of a move it makes, right? All these big moves to the upside happens when it's above the 50, even this, right? So what we're seeing right now is simply the S&P 500 is above the 50 week moving average. And this is just bullish. I don't know why people are bearish on this. As long as it's above here, it's simply bullish. It has been, you know, for the last pretty much decade. So trying to short it in advance Sure, maybe you can get a top right before a drop like this, but in general, the trend is your friend, okay? So the trend is now in bullish territory. Why do you want to go against it? And of course, that changes as soon as we get a weekly close below this 50-week uh, moving average and it becomes dangerous. Obviously, below the 200 becomes really dangerous because then we're looking at a scenario like 2008 with a major crash. But so far, the charts are basically not indicating that at all. And this is something I've been saying for uh, probably close to uh, six months at this point in time, where I've been saying, I don't think we get a global market crash until about six to 12 months after the first rate cut. Okay, based on history, that is how it works. The Federal Reserve raises interest rates. And as long as that keeps going up, the market does not crash. The market only tends to crash after the first rate cut and usually about six to 12 months after. So we still have not had a rate cut. The, the Federal Reserve has been increasing the interest rates since 2022, they so far have not cut, okay? And there's still talks about further increases. So if that means we only get a rate cut potentially somewhere later this year, that means we might not be looking at a global market crash for another six to 12 months after that first rate cut, which means, and again, this is something I've been saying for a while, is that we could potentially be looking at new all-time highs in the stock markets before a major global market crash. Now, one thing that is also the case is that still there is a huge amount of positioning to the bearish side. People are shorting this in a big way. And usually when the direction of the crowd is in one way, the opposite tends to happen because it just doesn't happen that everyone is betting to the downside and then it goes down and all these people betting, the majority betting to the downside all get rich. It just doesn't work that way. So everyone is still trying to short this. Like I said, the indicators to me, it's all just bullish. Above the 50 week moving average is bullish. So. What I do expect over here, what we can see is we have these highs. If we zoom in, uh, I'm not going to do that right now, but you can see these highs over here. Um, so I do think they will get taken out. We have the Fibonacci golden pocket level over here. So that would give confidence with taking out this high over here, right? So if we see a move here and then we're going to have to wait and see, does it reject here and go lower? Again, always a possibility, but until we get that scenario and until we get the invalidation below the 50, um, I'm still bullish, right? And then we have to see, but it could also be a case of that it goes there and it continues higher. And we do see new all-time highs in the S&P 500 um, towards the end of this year or maybe even early next year. And then by that time, all the shorts, all the people betting to the downside, they will have been liquidated and people get FOMO bullish saying, oh, there's no more crash, we're all flipping long. Everyone flips long towards the highs or new all-time highs. And then we get a major drop. That is most likely uh, just from a sentiment and psychology point of view, what these markets do, that is makes much more sense than if everyone's short here and it's going to the downside, okay? So that is how I'm seeing this chart right now. Obviously, if stock markets were to go to all-time highs within the next six to 12 months from now, that probably means there's also good upside for crypto. And that is also something that I've been saying is a possibility this year. So we'll look at that a little bit later. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. 
So we have a similar story here. Again, this is a weekly chart, the 200 simple moving average in red, the 50 simple moving average in blue. And it's the same story of what I just outlined. As long as we're above this 50, it's just full blown bullish, right? The 50 week moving average just results in these big moves to the upside. You can see over and over and over. So I don't know why anyone who's looking at this chart says it's bearish, right? As long as we're above this 50, we are simply bullish. You get below there, sure. Then we start to look at, okay, maybe this is potentially bearish. Get below this this 200 week moving average, like here in 2008. Obviously, then there's massive downside risk. But the trend is your friend till the end. And you can see as long as we're above here, look at this. Imagine you were bearish here. Look at the move that came from there, right? Or imagine you started getting bearish here. It was above the 50. Look at the move to the upside that still followed, okay? So we don't know what is going to happen. But again, based on what I'm seeing here, we were above this also. You can see this diagonal. I'm not too much of a fan of it, but in this case, it does work nicely. It was in a downtrend, broke above it, retested it over here, and now we're back above it. And you can see again, if you would zoom in on lower time frames, you have all these highs over here, which is the liquidity, which is the stops. Lots of people are bearish on this, expecting it to go down. So a nice move to the upside would take out all the stops, it would liquidate all the people who are short or cause them to take a loss, flip their position. And then by the time it gets to new all time highs, we're probably going to start seeing the opposite. Everyone gets super bullish again. They're saying, oh, it's never going to crash, etc." And then when everyone is positioned massively to the upside at the all time highs, then, you know, we can see a massive, massive crash, which again, in my opinion, would only come somewhere between six to 12 months after the first rate cut. So once we get that first rate cut, it is a sign of starting to be cautious. Um, and then we can look at that. But basically, this is how I'm seeing the charts and the stock markets simply just look bullish according to the charts and how I interpret them. Now, what we have here is the US dollar index, and it's pretty important to keep an eye on these charts, especially for the longer term uh, macro direction for stocks and crypto, because one thing that I've just noticed, and it's very easy to see, is that there's a very inverse correlation between the dollar index and crypto and stocks. So when the dollar index goes down, crypto and stocks go up and vice versa. I actually made a video about this. I will link to it in the description down below and uh, up here if you're watching this on YouTube. And you can see the annotations. This proves it very, very easily. Our entire crypto bull market here in 2017 was when the dollar index was trending down here. You can go and check this and verify it for yourself, especially it accelerated. So we got the, the real uh, kind of mania phase of the bull market once the dollar index got below here, the 50 moving average, which is in blue. You okay, can get rid of the red because it's not important on this chart. But you can see here, this was our 2017 bull market and it really accelerated here from about May of 2017 until um, when it peaked in about January 2018 and that's when this bottomed. Our entire bear market was when the dollar index went on this multi-year um, bullish trend, okay? Then we had our 2020 bull market again, same thing when the dollar index trended down for multiple months and it really started picking up speed over here um, once uh, the dollar index got below the 50 week moving average in about June of 2020, just after the halving. That's when the crypto market started picking up. And you can see when this bottomed over here in May 2021, that was actually the high of the crypto bull market. And I know we got like a second slightly higher double top in uh, Bitcoin where it went to 69,000 in November. But actually, if you look at most altcoins, they actually peaked in May 2021. So again, perfect inverse correlation. Our entire 2022 bull, uh, bear market, sorry, was here when the dollar index went on this massive run to the upside. And when that peaked, you can see over here in about uh, towards the end of last year, uh, about November here, you can see November, end of October, early November. That is pretty much when the crypto market bottomed with the F FTX collapse right here also at this point in time. And since then, we've been enjoying some bullish momentum in the crypto markets. And you can see, again, we are below the 50 week moving average on the dollar index. We actually came up to retest it, bearish retest over here, but it got rejected, it's still below it. So if we get a continued downtrend here in the dollar index and it continues going lower for the next, I don't know, six to 12 months, we are likely going to see what I just said in the stock markets too, a, a new rally, probably to new all time highs, very possibly. Um, as long as this dollar index moves a lot lower over the next few months, we see probably stocks go to new all time highs and a massive, massive continuation in crypto is still my idea. Maybe even new all-time highs before the 2024 halving. And that's also something I've been saying for the last couple of months, that there is potential that we might end up front-running the traditional halving bull market, where, you know, the bull market in crypto only comes after the Bitcoin halving. But I think based on this, 
we might actually see that happen potentially in the next six to 12 months where the scenario would be, okay, maybe we get a rate cut from the Federal Reserve sometime later this year that gives us six to 12 months, perfectly in time with the Bitcoin halving, which is coming in about April of 2024. And it's just something, in my opinion, that most people won't expect because they're not expecting a new Bitcoin halving uh, or a new Bitcoin bull market until, you know, middle or end of 2024. So by the market not giving another correction and dropping back below, say, 20,000 or whatever, and it just continues higher, imagine it goes to 60, 70, 80,000 within the next year or so, just obviously corrections along the way, but nothing massive, no major crash, that would catch a lot of people off guard. And again, would probably only get them to FOMO in near the very top um, when they finally say, oh, it's a bull market. Yes, it's been a bull market for a year already. By that time, people finally get in. And then obviously the scenario plays out again, that when most people get involved towards the top and it's on TV and et cetera, et cetera, that's probably near the top. And then we're in for probably a global market crash and a crypto bear market at some point. So I think it's important to look at these things from time to time. I think it's pretty clear at this point in time, stock markets are still in bullish territory. Dollar index is in bearish territory. That's good for stocks and crypto to the upside. And until that changes, um, the trend is your friend until the end. So if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe down below. If you are not yet a VIP member, click the link in the description down below. Also, there's still three days left at this point in time um, to be able to join my intelligent trading course. There's a 50% discount. So it's included in VIP. If you join VIP, you get access to the trading course. But if you only want to buy the trading course, on its own, then there's a 50% discount on that. The link is in the description down below. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.